Welcome to video two for week seven. In the previous video, I defined a tangent vector to a parametric curve, which was the derivative of the parametric curve in each of its coordinates, and it defined the local direction and speed of motion along a parametric curve. I want to talk a little bit more about tangent vectors in this video, giving some more definitions, talking about how they can be understood and how they can be used. We defined parametric curves also in different coordinate systems. So for example, in R2, I could have a parametric curve that is defined in polar coordinates. The point I wanna make here is that tangents and tangent vectors as derivatives are really a Cartesian notion. They reflect the, the fact that the Cartesian coordinates are still our basic coordinate system. So if you wanted to calculate a tangent vector gamma prime for a nonlinear coordinate system, you'd actually have to translate things back into tangent, into Cartesian coordinates. So the Cartesian coordinate x is r cos theta, the Cartesian coordinate y is r sine theta. So the derivative of the Cartesian coordinate x is the derivative of this product by product rule is r prime times cos theta, and the derivative of cos is negative sine, so this would be negative r sine times theta times the derivative of theta. Likewise, you'd have to di differentiate this using the product rule to get this, and then your tangent vector would be this and this as x and y coordinates of an actual Cartesian vector. So the, the, the use of nonlinear coordinates is very valuable in parametric curves, but a lot of the main ideas of calculus, we have to go back to Cartesian coordinates to actually calculate all of these things. So be careful extending tangents and the other things we're going to define in later videos for this week into nonlinear coordinate systems. There's also a really nice connection between what we did last week with arc lengths and tangents. So stated in R2, the length of a curve, the arc length of a curve, was this integral. And if we look at this, this is the derivative of the coordinates of the curve. Those are the coordinates of the tangent vector. And the square root of the squares of coordinates, that's just the length of a vector. So the length of a curve is actually the integral of the length of the tangent vector. And the length of the tangent vector is the scalar speed along the curve. And that makes sense, is that the distance you travel should be the integral of how fast you're traveling. So this is your speed, integrate speed, you get distance. So this is really nice concrete kind of way that this relates back to the things we understood in first year in single variable calculus, that the integral of speed should be distance traveled. Arc length is in fact the integral of speed. And if we look at the arc length function and differentiate it, then we get the derivative of an integral by the fundamental theorem of calculus. These things cancel them out. So the derivative of the arc length function is in fact the speed. The arc length function is how much distance you're you're picking up as you go along in terms of time, well, that's exactly what speed is. It makes sense that the derivative of the arc length, derivative of length, derivative of position, should be speed. I reparametrized a helix at the end of last week by arc length, so that I got the helix in terms of its arc length parameter, and I got this expression, that gamma of s was these three terms. And this is the arc length parameterization. So this is the parameterization where the distance and the time are the same, and I move along the curve one unit of distance per one unit of time. Well, let me calculate the speed of this thing in the arc length parameter s. If I take the derivatives of these and I square them, I get these expressions. Derivative of this is just gonna be four over root 20, square that, get 16 over 20. Uh, take the derivative of that, we get some terms out, so we get root 20s and root 20s. Um, I'm gonna get a sine and a cosine out of these things. If I square them and add them up, we're gonna get a cos squared plus a sine squared of the same thing. So that means this expression, cos squared plus sine squared of the same thing is gonna give me one, which means I'm gonna get four over 20 plus 16 over 20, which is gonna be 20 over 20, which is gonna give me one. And that has proved that the length of the derivative in the arc length parameter is in fact one. That's what we expect the arc length parameter to do. Let me recap this again, just to make sure it all ties together. If I have a parametric curve, I reparameterize by arc length. The length of the tangent vector of the arc length parameterization is one. That means the speed of the arc length parameterization is one. And the arc length parameterization is the unique parameterization 
with that property, that makes sense because the parameter is distance. So for each unit of time, we you move one unit of distance since the parameter literally is distance. The parameter measures the distance along the curve. The speed of moving one unit of time per one unit of distance should be one. And you can check this for any parameterization by arc length. The parameterization by arc length will always have its tangent vectors be length one. We're going to make use of this in, in future videos, and I'm not going to delve too deeply into the technical details, but for a lot of the definitions that we make in the calculus of parametric curves, we're going to make the definitions first in the arc length parameterization, because it's sort of the special unique parameterization we can define for each curve, and then we'll move from the arc length parameterization into how to express them in any other kind of parameterization. This is a really common and standard technique we start in, in parametric curves and extends throughout the whole rest of calculus and uh, differential geometry past that.